Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we are honored to welcome Anna Lee Kruger, author and founder of Care Right. Welcome, Anna Lee. Thank you for having me on your guest podcast show today. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, Annalie, tell us about CareRight and what it is you're doing and how you're helping families. Great. So, so I started out as a social worker and marketing director and then executive director in long-term care 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Part of my role was to do tours with families when they would come in. Most of them were in medi- you know, in a crisis. Mom fell, she's in the hospital. Hospital says, here's a list of facilities, go find one by noon tomorrow because we're discharging. And so the kids were in the care communities doing the tours. They had no idea what questions to ask or what to look for. So the tour would only take about an hour, but I was spending two and three hours at a time with each family because they had so many questions about, well, how is care going to get paid? Um, What can we expect from care in this care community? They weren't able to answer some of the questions that I would ask them, like, does your mom have a living will? Does she have a power of attorney? Is she a full code or a do not resuscitate? Um, Does she have long term care insurance? So the answers were mostly the same. They're like, I don't know. Our family never talks about stuff like that. But then I had like this many families in that 18 year period that would say, you know, Anna Lee, we tried to get this information from mom and dad, but they gave us so much pushback that we quit trying because they wanted to salvage their relationships. Right. So after 18 years of gathering all of this data that clearly families really don't talk about the what ones of aging. So I started Care Right Incorporated in 2011. It's a virtual family consultant um, company. I've been nationwide since 2011. Um, And what I do is I work with families all across the country because the profile of a typical family isn't what it used to be 30 years ago. 30 years ago, everybody lived down the street from each other, but that's just not how it is these days. So I rarely have families that actually live in the same zip code, let alone time zone. So I facilitate their family meetings. I learn from them what's working well, what's not working well, what are their goals, which are usually to age in place at home, and what's the plan if staying at home is no longer safe, feasible, or viable for your loved one or for you. And where does it make sense for when you need more care or if you need more care that you would go to receive that care? So, for example, you know, if mom and dad live in Tucson, Arizona, but their four kids live in Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, you know, does it make sense for mom and dad to stay in Arizona as they age, knowing that as they become more dependent and more vulnerable, and they're in and out of the hospitals more, and the kids, how realistic and feasible is it for kids to continually drop what they're doing and take time off work and take time away from their families to kind of come to the rescue and, and figure out what to do. So it's it's called an aging plan that I work with families. So we look at care options in um, the commun- in the communities that the kids live in, if that's the direction that they want to go, right? So if it means through the course of one of those family meetings that we're that the family has decided, yeah, let's look at Akron, Ohio, as an example, um, and we'll move mom and dad closer to where the daughter lives or the son lives. Then we do the uh, care matrix with what are home care options in their area? Um, Is there adult daycare programs in their area for those clients that would benefit from that type of service? Um, And then we look at what care communities are available that they would be able to qualify to get into. 
Now, when when they're looking into these different types of you know long term care solutions and services, do you do you have relationships with these cities and different places, or how how do you select the ones for them, or are you just going on and searching? How do, how does that process work? Yep. So we do we do the research. We we come up with usually five to eight different care communities. But to get to that five to eight, we might have had to research 20 different care communities. Um, we don't have any contracts or, you know, our services are paid for by the family. So we have their vested interest at heart. We're not a placement company where they get the kickbacks, you so know, from like the facility. Place for mom or oh, like no, no. Yeah. No, no, we that is totally the opposite of my business model. Um, we're very relationship based. Um, and it's it's about educating the families about caregiver burnout, about dementia, about long term care options, how to pay for care, um, how to support the family the best way possible and making sure that they have all of their um, through the grab and go binder, have all of their, um, you know, legal documents in order that they have their long term care insurance policies that everything is at the fingertips for when that information is needed. And for a family that might be listening or watching this interview, and they might find themselves in a circumstance that mom is needing extra help. You know, you had the geographical barriers that kind of prevents things from being as easy as like you said, where it may have been 30, 40 years ago, where everybody lives in the same community. Walk us through the process. So somebody reaches out to care, right? What's step one and kind of walk us through the steps of what that's like. Sure. So step one is um, scheduling a 30 minute consult. That's either on zoom or over the phone. Um, if they're in my direct area, they can certainly meet with me or one of my teammates in the, in the Naples, Florida area. Um, once it gets cleaned up again from the hurricane, but um, most most of my clients, I'm almost 100% virtual. So they would they would schedule a, a 30 minute consult. They can either do that on my website or they can just reach out to me directly. But through the website, we have an online calendar, so families can just pick what day and time works best for them. They don't need to prepare anything for that consult. Um, it's just I'll be asking them, or my team and I will be asking them. You know, what what's the reason for the call today? Are you concerned about the safety or well-being of your loved one? Um, on that consult checklist, I have different boxes that they can check to see, you know, are they looking for help with care decisions? Do they just want family meetings because they're not in consensus with how to best handle mom and dad's care needs? So it starts with that 30-minute consult. I get the information from them about what, what are their goals, what, what's keeping them up at night, and then we go over which packages that we have that would make the best, would be the most suitable for what their situation is. Um, then they look at the proposal that we send to them. And most families agree to move forward because unfortunately, by the time they come to me, they're in medical, they're in a crisis and they have to make big decisions really quickly. So so most people, it makes sense to them to put an aging plan in place. They'll be like, oh, how did we not ever think of that? And I right. said, well, because you're in the, you know, you're in survival mode. You're in the throes of caregiving. And it, you know, it's hard to think clearly when you're truly just in survival mode, trying to get everything taken care of, plus manage your own life. Yeah. And well, and you, you mentioned something that we see far too often, and that is people don't know what they don't know. You know, mm -hmm. most children of their elderly loved ones, and they don't even always have to be elderly, they're not really thinking about those long-term solutions or long-term planning, and you have something called aging plans. Um, what exactly does that mean when you help a family with an aging plan? Yep. So so that's me facilitating their family meeting or, or one of my teammates facilitating their family meetings. Um, I find that most families don't know how to facilitate a family meeting or don't even think about facilitating a family meeting. And they honestly don't know. They come to us so ill-informed that there's no way they could make smart decisions or informed decisions because they're basing decisions off of wrong information, right? So for example, um, most people think that Medicare will pay for everything, like every single old 
older adult expense. And that's just simply not the case. So, but when they think that, then they don't make good decisions, right? Or if they think that assisted living level of care is the same thing as, as a nursing home, then they're not making good decisions. So our model is very education-based and that way they can make those decisions that make the right sense for what their financial situation is and what their, what their family's need is. Mm -hmm. Right. And what is, what are some of the most common issues that you guys address or that you hear about at caring, right? Or care, right? Care, caregiver burnout for sure. Mm -hmm. So most people 92, despite my best efforts at trying to get people to plan ahead and let's sit down and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of aging now, versus at the crisis mode, um, 92% of my clients come to me in, in crisis. The, the caregiver is completely burned out. They have maybe used up all their vacation days or their FMLA, or the primary caregiver spouse might have just had a heart attack or stroke or died because, because they didn't have enough supports in place to um, help manage the care of the person receiving the care. Um, and then just with a pandemic, families panicking because they couldn't travel to check on their vulnerable adults that were still living at home or in, in a care community and they couldn't communicate with them at all. Um, other predicaments families find themselves in that they that they work with us on is just quality of care issues. Um, because they don't know what they don't know. They don't do the research of these different care communities right. and and so they plunk their loved one into a care community, not realizing that maybe that's a poor performer or that they've got staffing issues, which now most of them do. Um, but they don't do their research because they don't know what they don't know. And then they put mom or dad into a care community and then find that it's not meeting their needs or their expectations or they didn't have enough money to sustain living there long enough. And now, now that mom and dad are adjusted in the care community, now they have to go find someplace else for them to live because it, maybe that care community is private pay only. Right. So it's really, edu that's why I say it's really education based. It's really kind of curriculum based. There's over 25 different components to an aging plan that I do with my clients that, that purchase the comprehensive aging plan so that they can make smart decisions and they can understand how to pay for care and that they don't have to get burned out as a caregiver because if there's enough supports in place for mom and dad at home to be healthy and vibrant and successful at home, then the kids don't have to constantly drop what they're doing and leave their jobs to tend to these issues that continually come up when there's not enough supports in place. Right. And that, and that's a far too common issue is the yeah. caregiver burnout. And then, you know, you have the sandwich component, the sandwich generation component, and, you know, just having a service like care, right. Giving these families that extra support and kind of almost like a roadmap is really remarkably beneficial for them. What is, what are the three, you mentioned you have three different packages or plans. What, what are the differences between one, two, and three? So one of the packages is more of like an introductory aging plan, giving them the lay of the land, like what home care can do. If their goal is to age in place at home, that can definitely happen, but you have to have the supports in place to make that work, right? So it's, it's educating them about the benefits of aging in place at home, how to make that happen. So what can home care do? What's the value proposition of home care? What all can they do? I have clients that already receive home care because we we join in the family's journey wherever they are whether they're already in crisis or they're proactively planning and we work with whomever they already have in place for professionals that they're already working with but i have so many families that are receiving home care and they didn't even know that the age could take them to doctor's appointments or that you know they don't understand necessarily that there's so much more that the home care companion can help them with and they're like oh i had no idea <laughs> well is that is that through a company or is that when they're hiring them privately um some both actually really? both. Okay. yep yep and i've had i've had families that didn't realize that they could adjust the care plan with a home care company they're like no we're we're only going to get 20 hours of care from them and i'm like no you can always adjust that mm -hmm. and get more so yeah. it's really educating families and letting them know that they've got great supports in place we need to maximize it right, right? Yeah. 
so so that's so that's one thing is 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 just kind of that introductory aging plan just to give them that type of information let them understand that when it comes time or if it comes time that they can't stay at home letting them you know educating them about what are the differences in levels of care what's independent living what's assisted living what's memory care what's the cost structure how does that all work um, how do you qualify for those types of different care communities? Letting them understand, you know, long-term care insurance, if your loved one has it, let's look at that policy so that you get more familiar with it. So if or when the time comes you need to engage with it, you're familiar and you're not dusting it off at the 11th hour trying to figure all this stuff out. So, so that's like kind of my most introductory basic package. Um, and then because of the pandemic and the fear involved with having loved ones in these care communities, I created a, because you always have to listen to what the market right. says, right? Yeah, absolutely. So people were pulling their loved ones from the care communities and they were doing everything in their power to keep their loved one at home, leveraging families who were not at the office anymore because of the pandemic. So I created another package that is the me facilitating the family meetings or my team and I facilitating the family meetings and helping them understand care options, but not care communities, right? Because they were really trying to keep their loved one out. Sure. So so really maximizing home care, the, the value of, of home care companies and how they could make that work using a layered approach with maybe adult daycare or home care because of the staffing shortages, some of my clients have two or three different home care companies working with them to fulfill those shifts, like those 24 mm -hmm. seven shifts, right? Yeah. And then that comprehensive package, um, there's kind of two, two variations of that. It, it can be just the, the comprehensive aging plan where again, it's, it's facilitating those family meetings. It's doing that care matrix, all that research. One, one geographic location for those care matrices takes my team about 30 hours to put it, put that spreadsheet together, make the phone calls to all the care communities, call the home care companies, get the information on adult daycare, find out if there's certified aging in place specialists in that area. So it takes us about 30, sometimes 35 hours per matrix location. So it's labor intense. But if we didn't do that for those families, that's why they end up making poor decisions because they don't know what they don't know or they're prematurely putting their loved ones in a care community because they didn't know that home care can do all of this stuff or that there's right. aging in place specialists that can help remodel that house to make it more senior safe. So now do you guys always work in the background in the sense that after a family, you know, retains your services and you help and they get placed or they find the right home care company to serve them or whatever the long-term care solution would be, do you, do you ever advocate for that family as well? And like you would call the home um, care company and yep. act on behalf of the family as well? Yep. So that's, that's some of our clients are just, they just want that aging plan. And then on that last family meeting, we say, okay, so here's all the recommendations. Here's, you know, home care, here's aging in place. Here's a elder planning, you know, um, attorney, you know, whatever referrals and recommendations that that the family needs, then I'll say, OK, so here's the aging plan. Here's what needs to be done. And because they come to us in crisis, things are pretty messy and they don't have things buttoned up at all or they have expired power of attorney documents, meaning the person that they named 25 years ago is either dead, demented or they don't have a relationship with that person anymore. So that's how comprehensive that comprehensive package is. And then at that last meeting, we talk about, do you want care right to help you impl implement the plan? Or do you want to, as a family, divide and conquer? Most families, because they're so burned out by the time they find us or get referred to us, they're like, oh, we just don't have that, the emotional bandwidth to now make all these phone calls to you know, the home care or the attorney and get the tours scheduled at these care communities. So most of our clients are then on an ongoing care package. We also have an annual package where maybe the family does want to implement the plan on their own because they feel like they have enough supports in place that they can divide and conquer, making 15 or 20 different phone calls and, and implementing the plan. Right. But most, most of our clients, they'll go on an annual package 
where we'll check in with them, you know, once a month or quarterly and just make sure that they're doing okay if they wanted less of a white glove approach. Mm -hmm. But most of our, most of our clients, probably 90% of our clients, once we do that aging plan and on that last family meeting, they're like, oh, if you could help us implement it and oversee their care and work as their patient advocate, that's usually what families do. I see. Part of, part of that aging plan, all of the plans that we have for families also incorporate they get a um, checklist on how to tour these care communities with confidence. They get a checklist on, um, you know, how to interview home care companies or things that they should think about with home care companies. Um, they also get a checklist, a seven page checklist on how to be a bold advocate so that they can make sure that their loved one is getting the best quality of care possible. We also provide them a Old printout and we go over it with them too on what are the differences in levels of care all the way from independent living to palliative care and hospice because there's a lot of um, again misinformation about that and so they're not making smart decisions because they don't know what they don't know so again it's it's really education based so they can make informed decisions and was it from and I know you're also the author of the book the invisible the Invisible Patient, The Emotional, Financial, and Physical Toll on Family Caregivers, which is available on Amazon, and there's the book there. Did <laughs> did you write that book based on your experiences with CareRight, or how did the book come about? The book came about because for me to be able to try, there's 65, I mean, there's statistics all over the place, but there's 65.7 million family caregivers out there in the United States. And for care right to try to reach as many of them as we can. And I understand that not everybody might be able to or not interested in a white glove approach aging plan process. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote The Invisible Patient so that I could reach more families and educate them because my brand is about educating families so they can make informed decisions. So in the book, The Invisible Patient, it's it's jam packed with checklists and how to facilitate your own family meetings. It's everything that I do white glove approach in a book. And the purpose is to reach more families so that they can either try to do their own aging plan using my book as a, a manual or a reference guide. It came about because I've had literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families say, I wish there was a, a manual for what to do with mom and dad. So I wrote one. Okay, that's wonderful. And they can get on Amazon. Is it available on your website as well? It is. Yep, it's available on the website. We just have the link that goes to Amazon. Oh, okay. The reason why I have the cover as a bench, a lonely bench, is because caregiving, when you don't have enough supports in place, can be very lonely, can be oh. very isolating, and can be very depressing and full of angst. And it does not have to be oh. that way. If you have a plan and you start having family meetings and communicate about the what whens of aging. And the other thing is too, when you asked about what are some of the common things families come to me about, it's dementia progression. They really, they really don't understand dementia. And they wouldn't because most of them are in uncharted territory. But I can always tell when I'm working with a family who may not have been educated or, or taken time to educate themselves about dementia when they say things like, well, if dad, if dad's d dementia gets worse. So I have th that's part of those ongoing care packages for families is, yes, we need to put that plan or that crisis management solutions in place first. But then let's go back and, and help you be successful with your demented loved one with having more meaningful visits, how not to argue and fight when you're, you know, how to use redirection, right. redirection and validation and how how home care or adult daycare programs or layering both of those can make your life so much easier. So if you know that bath time is a problem, outsource it, you know, yeah. don't right. be the one to do the shower then, you know, it allows the having that aging plan allows the adult kids and the spouse to just be the adult kids. Be the child. Yeah, exactly. You know, go get to go visit your dad and watch a Packers. I started my business in Wisconsin. <laughs> so That's go, go spend the weekend with your dad watching the Packers game instead of having to, you know, have a whole 15 checklist job list every time you go there. It's 
that's one of the things that families are always saying is I just want to be the son or the daughter or the spouse is saying, I don't, I don't, I don't identify as being the husband or the wife anymore. I'm well, the roles I'm change, sure. the roles, the roles change. And, you know, I just wanted to touch on one thing real quickly, you know, talking about home care. And of course, that's what our, our family business does here in Michigan. And, you know, when families find the right fit for their situation, that doesn't just mean, you know, having the care, whether it's long-term care facilities, assisted living, you know, adult daycares or home care, but those companies, you know, they have a responsibility to provide that information and those resources to these families. You know, I, it's just very disappointing when you say, you know, families aren't aware that, you know, the caregivers can take them on a medical appointments or errands or just on an outing and that they didn't know they could change their hours or their schedules, that should all be part of the care plan. You know, the care plan is never written in stone. It's an ever evolving document. And the case managers that those families are um, working with, that's their, that's their job is to check in and to have that open communication to advise them and recommend things or, you know, listen just as an ear to listen to, you know, mom had a really bad night last night. You know, and that's where I think, too, you know, I always recommend the families, if they have the ability to do it, whether it's virtually or in person, join a caregiver support group, because mm -hmm. that's a place where you're going to have a commonality with other people who are all maybe not experiencing the exact situations that you're going through. But the one commonality is you're all a caregiver in some capacity mm -hmm. where your friends and your social uh, social circle may not be experiencing those things. So these people are there to be your support and you're there to be their support and you build that, you know, that network together. So if mom is having a bad night, call your friend from the caregiver support group, you know, just as an ear to listen to, because at least they can understand to some degree what you're experiencing and going through or celebrate the small victories. You know, mom had a great night last night and she yes. slept for eight hours, you know, and that, it is an emotional, financial, and physical toll. And I just love the title of your book because it really is more than just hands-on care. It, it affects every aspect of your life. And, you know, being there and knowing that there's resources like CareRight really will make a profound difference, a positive profound difference in people's journeys as caring for their loved ones and finding what's best for their loved ones. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I say this probably 15 times a day because we, we, we have a lot, we have a, a lot of clients, right? And they all come to, to care right from word of mouth referral because I, I don't advertise. But when you do a good job and your pricing is fair and your family sees the value in what you've done with them, they right. just continue to make referrals, right? Like you're, you're in that same position. You, you know, you, you get a lot of word of mouth referrals too. And so, I, I say every single day on these 30 minute consults, you know, caregiving and aging and dementia progression can be a positive experience if you know what you're up against with the, you know, with dementia, if you have enough supports in place, if your family's communicating well, and if you know what your next level option is, if where you are right now isn't working, what's the next step? What's the contingency? What's the contingency plan? And I say that every day. And I think that's why families, you know, on those 30 minute consults, they're like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Because for that 30 minutes or 45 minutes that we spend with them on the phone, they can just kind of unplug enough to be like, oh, this makes they have the intellect to be like, oh, this makes perfect sense. And, you know, even with the dementia progression you know, or, or chronic disease progression, families, you know, I call it that caregiver snowball, you know, it starts out kind of manageable, you know, like, oh, sure, I can come over once a week. And then the next thing they know, they're, they're not only just dropping off groceries, they're giving mom a shower, they're helping her in the toilet. Now they're changing her bed linens, because she had an accident. Now it's become a part time job. And now they have to take vacation days to coordinate doctor's appointments that one doctor's appointment can take all day, all right? Day. Right. And and it doesn't have to get to that point if you have enough su supports and services in place and you're communicating as a family. So even though 92 percent of my clients come to me in crisis, 85 percent of those families, because they're so burned out or they have so many miss 
perceptions about aging and quality of life and how to spend the inheritance, I'm doing mediation with 85% of my clients because they're so burned out or they just don't, they don't understand what they don't know. Right. right. Absolutely. And as far as that online support group too, because I, I, I am trying to do everything that I can in my power to reach as many families as possible. So I also started the Care Right Family Caregiver Solutions Facebook page, which is, it's a free group. And every day we put content in there about, or information about self-care, um, what is an aging plan? You know, what does home care do? And that's, you're going to be a guest on my podcast next, yeah, week. next week. And yeah. that's going to end up in the group so that they understand what home care, what home care can do for them. And then every week, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, I do a Facebook live. So like yesterday, I talked about warning signs of caregiver burnout. And, you know, what are the role changes that you may expect, you know, with, not always feeling like being the son or the daughter or the spouse, right? So that was our topic yesterday. So every yep, every Wednesday at 3 p.m., we have a Facebook live where I do I do I share information that's going to help these families be more successful. Now, if they want to learn how to develop their own aging plan, then they can take my class on where I walk them through how to facilitate your family meeting. Everything that I do, white glove approach, I've created modules and I'll teach them as a group how to develop their own aging plan. Wonderful. Well, we are going to have the links to your Facebook group, as well as to the book and to the Care Right website and all of your social media platforms. And it's just been a wonderful conversation that this work that you're doing at CareRight is just remarkably, remarkably needed. And it's tremendous that, you know, you've taken this on as your mission. And I know you're positively affecting lives all over the world. And we just really appreciate your time with us here today. Well, thank you so much for having me on as your as your guest today and all that you do. So everything that we do is important for these families. That's best, right. best success. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Annalie. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com, where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions. Every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to say thank you again to Annalie Kruger, founder of CareRight, for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.